hello everyone welcome to sourcecad i was thinking about this tutorial for a long time and i was wondering whether this is worth a try because in real life scenarios you won't require to make a diamond knurling because that can be shown on a 2d drawing directly without creating the knurling and all the threads but i thought about giving it a try and here it is finally so let's start once again with a 3d modeling workspace as we are going to make a 3d drawing so here i am in 3d modeling workspace and also make sure we have an extra layer so go to this layers panel and click on this layer properties now here you'll find a single layer which is the default layer let's click on this new layer and add one more layer here so leave this name as layer one we are not going to change it so let's click this layer properties manager now we'll start with the drawing first we need to make a circle so let's go to this circle and click at any point here and make a circle with a radius of five units so you can keep any unit which you want i am not changing the unit i am keeping the default unit for this drawing right now which is inches in this case so obviously the drawing will not be of this dimension i am assuming all the dimensions just to make this clear so here i have this drawing with five units now after that go to this home view and change it to a 3d by selecting this extrude command so let's select extrude select the circle press enter and give it a height of 20 units so i'll type 20 and press enter so here i have this now let's change the visual style from wireframe to shaded so that we can see this more clearly so here we have this drawing now we will add threads to this drawing for adding a threads i'll go to this draw panel and from here i'll select this helix now click add this bottom center here when you hover your cursor close to this bottom of this cylinder you'll see that we have center here on the tooltip so when this appears click and now make a circle with radius 5 units now once again type 5 and press enter for the top radius of this helix and now we need to specify the distance between two turns or the twists for that here we can select this turn height option from the command line so click on this turn height and change this turn height to one unit and press enter so now we have a turn height of one let's click on this center point of the cylinder on the top and here we have the final helix now for creating the threads we need to create a new geometry and we can create in that geometry uh, let's see which plane will be best suitable so i think the front plane will be best suitable in this case so i'll click on this front view and let's move it to the side and make sure that you select this view option from the coordinates panel before making any drawing because the drawings can only be made in x y view and right now we are into x z or zx view so let's click here and the view is changed to x y now let's go to this rectangle command and make a small rectangle you can eyeball it and we don't need to be very precise here so i'm making this small rectangle here just about this size now select rotate select this rectangle click at the center point of this rectangle the geometric center and now rotate it about a 45 degree angle like this okay now we will move this rectangle on the end point of this helix for that i'll just pan this drawing a little bit i'll orbit this and here i have it so let's select it let's select move command click on the geometric center and place it exactly at the end point of this helix so since i'm not able to figure out end point of the helix clearly in this case so i'll hide this 3d cylinder let's select go to isolate and hide objects and here we have it the drawing in clear view so let's now orbit this a little bit and let's select this select move command let's go to the geometric center once again so you, you can zoom it as well here we have it and let's move it to this point okay here we have it now once again you don't need to be very precise about this because the drawing will properly align itself along with the helix so here i am not concerned about the plane on which this rectangle is made so let's now go to the sweep tool so here we have the sweep tool select the rectangle press enter and now select this helix 
and here we have the final geometry so it is swept along the path and you can see it very clearly here and now we can bring back the hidden geometry so let's pan it here and let's bring back the hidden geometry by clicking on this small icon of unisolate objects on the status bar so click on this icon and click on end object isolation now we need to subtract the geometry for that go to solid editing and select this solid subtract and click inside the cylinder so make sure that the cylinder is selected so i'm selecting the cylinder and now carefully select the helix after pressing enter key obviously and here we have this helix so let's select this helix and press enter again and here we have the subtracted geometry with proper threads so half of the drawing is complete but still we have a long way to go so let's now place this part of the drawing on the layer which we initially created so that we can work properly with our drawing so i'll select this geometry and go to layers and let's put it on layer one okay now go to this top view again and let's rotate this one and now we will make another geometry for the head and for that once again i'll select this polyline command and now click at any point and make sure that polar tracking is turned on and here we have it the polar tracking is on let's enter a length of 10 units and press enter now move it downwards to let's say a depth of 7 units press enter move it inside to a length of 2 units and move it here to 4 units and now let's close this geometry like this now let's move on to this chamfer command and apply the chamfer so let's select distance and i'll select a distance of one unit and one unit and so i'll click on this one and this one and here it is it looks good so i'll apply it once again so press enter and select it here select it here and here we have it similarly go to this fillet tool and now from this fillet tool i'll select radius and let's apply a radius of one unit click at this one and this one and here we have it now we will revolve this geometry along this axis so let's go to this fly out and from here select this revolve command select the polyline press enter and select this part here for the axis of revolution and press enter again now our 3d geometry is ready and we can freeze the layer on which this object is present to work efficiently in AutoCAD. So I'll go to layers and from this drop down, I'll freeze this layer. Now we don't have that object here. And now we can move ahead with our drawing. So once again, I'll go to this draw panel and select helix. But this time, carefully select the center point here. So you'll see there are plenty of center points here. So make sure that you select the fourth center from the top so here is the fourth center from the top although it is not that required oops i made a mistake i forgot to change the axis so right now it's making on the top view so obviously you need to change the plane or the axis for making the drawing so that will be this back view right now it's x z so i'll go to this drop down and once again i'll change it to view now we have this x y view here and we can make a drawing here so let's now go to this helix again and here we have many points and obviously we need to carefully uh, select a center which is somewhere here so this looks good to me okay now let's apply a radius of 10 units and press enter and once again apply a radius of 10 press enter and now we need to specify number of turns so for that go to this turns not the turn height so click on this turns and enter a turn of 0 0.125 so we want this helix to turn only to almost one tenth of a complete revolution so let's now press enter and here we have the helix and so let's orbit this geometry to see this thing more clearly and now you can see it here and in order to apply the height you can directly click on this topmost center in order to see it more clearly change it to hidden view and you can see the helix which we made here so here we have the helix and you can clearly see that this is a turn of almost one tenth of a complete revolution and now we will make another geometry 
on this helix for that go to this view on the top and here again make a rectangle a small one but before that let's hide this one to take the reference of helix so select it go to isolate and select hide objects and here we have it so we'll take the reference of this helix for that i'll make a small rectangle close to this helix something like this okay now let's orbit this geometry and here it looks good to me let's bring back our geometry by clicking on this unisolate object icon and click on end object isolation here now i'll move this geometry on the helix so let's select move command let's go to the geometric center and click on this endpoint okay let's orbit this geometry to see it more clearly where we are and here it is right now the geometry seems very small to me so i'll increase its size for that i'll go to this scale tool and select the geometry here select enter click at this geometric center and increase its size to 1.3 factors so let's type 1.3 and press enter now the size is a little bit increased so let's orbit this drawing once again and this looks a little bit better than it was previously so that's perfect okay so let's now move to the top view so here on the top view you can clearly see the rectangle now the rectangle does not look properly aligned for that we will select this rotate tool and click on this rectangle press enter select the geometric center make sure that you select the geometric center and right now here we have this geometric center and let's now rotate this one a little bit so that it aligns something like this a straight rectangle pointing outwards now this looks good okay and now we'll make helix once again here and we'll convert it into 3d for that go to this sweep tool select the rectangle press enter and now select the path and here we have the helix in 3d now we need to make multiple copies of this helix for that i'll select this helix and now from modify panel go to this polar array now make sure you select the center point of any of these circles so let's select center here and here we have the array but the array has very little objects here so let's change this number of items to let's say 20 and press enter the objects are still very loosely spaced so i'll increase number of items to 28 and okay this seems good to me but i'll change it to 32 now and i think i need to change it to even bigger value so let's change it to 35 and this seems okay to me so now just make sure that the gap which is left in between these two objects is equal to the width of these objects here and in my case it's almost equal so i'll make a final tweak i'll change it to 38 and now here it is the final array okay now make sure this associative option is off right now in my case it is off because i'm not seeing a blue bounding box like this on this associative so make sure this is off and then click on this close array so now here we have this array now we need to make a mirror image of this array but before doing that let's move back to any of these views so here i am back to the initial view which is in between right and back view and before selecting mirror command we need to change the view so go to coordinates and from here click on this view so this will again make x y view here and our current view will become x y view so now expand this modify panel select mirror and select all of these objects in the array but make sure you avoid selecting this object only select the objects in the array and now press enter now specify the first point of mirror line which is obviously the center of this object so click on any of these centers and now move your cursor upwards completely in a straight direction so now click at any point and press enter here we have this diamond knurling applied to this now we only need to subtract the geometry and for subtracting the geometry we'll again go to this boolean operation but before that let's click on this top select the subtract now select this geometry here and press enter now make a complete bounding box so that all of these arrayed elements are included in it 
and let's press enter and here we have the final subtracted geometry so let's orbit this one and you can see the diamond knurling very clearly and if you want to change the view go to this drop down and change it to shaded so in order to see it more clearly and here the diamond knurling is completely visible now we can join the remaining part of this object and for that i'll go to this layer and from this drop down I will click on this freeze icon once again and here we have the object back in our drawing now we only need to move them together for that select this move command and select this object press enter select the center point which is the last center here and move it on the top of this geometry by selecting the center here and the drawing is complete here we have it we can join this because right now we have it as two separate objects in order to join it select this union tool select the first object and the second and press enter and here we have a final single geometry so in this way you can create diamond knurling on a nut and also you can create a threads here so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you have any questions related to this tutorial then let me know in the comments below and don't forget to share this video Thanks again for watching.